hello and welcome back to my video if you are new here welcome and thank you for joining me today it is my back anniversary. well actually a couple days ago it was my back anniversary. um but i was feeling kind of sick and i had a bad fibro flare so i was stuck in bed and feeling yucky the last couple days but i thought that i would do an update about my surgery that i had i had a spinal fusion three years ago um what led up to it how it's been since then any regrets and all that good stuff by starting off i've had back issues for quite some time i think i did make it worse when i was in um, basic training in fort jackson when i hurt my knee um kind of shifted things a little bit i've had body issues and um back issues for quite some time the spinal fusion was my second uh, back surgery that I had. The previous year, um, 2013, I had a laminoscopy and a disectomy done in the same area. And unfortunately, that wasn't successful um, at all. I also have degenerative joint disease, uh, arthritis, and ankylosing spondylosis in my back, as well as um, myofascial pain syndrome in this area compounded with my five rows. So this whole area is, is, is kind of jacked up. But um, I think the back surgery was a success paralleled with my spinal cord stimulator implant that I had done um, a little over two years ago. I wouldn't say the spinal cord surgery at first was a complete success for me. I still have a lot of uh, back pain and a lot of back issues. I've been to several different doctors, um, a different specialist, clinics, pain management institutes, and so forth. And it's a battle that I'm going to have um, for my entire life. Unfortunately, I have a or had a part-time job at a uh, interior furnishing place where there was beautiful uh, decor and and furnishings and things like that. And I had an incident at work. Um, that set me back a while, <laughs> quite a while. Um, teamed up with my spinal cord stimulant implant, I did have my pain regulated to a point where, yes, I would have bad days and um, I couldn't get out of bed, but they were so few um, after years. When I say years, we're looking at 20 or more years of working on my back. It was finally to a point where it was manageable and this setback occurred in July, and I'm still struggling um, with it. And the problem is, it's in a different location, so it's a different type of back pain. So I'm dealing with my regular back pain plus this back pain, but for sake of this video, we are just going to focus on the joys of my spinal cord stimulator implant and my, my fusion, especially my fusion. I was in the hospital for three days. I live in North Carolina and I had the surgery done at, mm, I believe it was in Wake Med Cary. I've had so many back surgeries, it's a shame. I don't remember which hospital. I want to say Wake Med Cary. And I was very um, fortunate that I did have someone to stay with me for about a month. And um, I had a partner that was helpful as well. Without that, and a combination of me being fortunate enough to have a uh, reclining chair downstairs. My, my downstairs, actually, there's that whole sofa is a recliner and then my love seat recliner. It's absolutely ridiculous because I really don't use a recliner chair. But if you have back surgery, some of the things for me that were completely mandatory, that recliner chair, because my bedroom's upstairs, going up and down steps was not an option for me. Um, tank tops, the pullover and comfortable. Um, you don't want to do a lot of lifting or bending or, or anything. Um, I probably had bought like 20 different tank tops and I still have them in like every freaking color imaginable and they're stretchy. They were comfortable when I had to raise my top up for the surgery and I was able to, it was just heaven sent. Um, depends. I know sounds kind of weird, huh? <laughs> but actually where I had my fusion, that was right at my bladder. So my bladder did get injured. So um, I had a PP problem for about three months after my surgery. And let me tell you, that shit was scary because it was like when I had a good urge to go to the bathroom, it was like, oh, got to go to the bathroom. Oh, just pissed myself. It was that bad. 
So it took about three months or so um, for my bladder to heal. And again, the doctor's like, we were banging in that area and you had things screwed in that area. And it's common um, to have some bladder issues or some type of bladder trauma after um, having the surgery. It took me about six months to heal, but not completely heal. And a lot of that is I have a, quite a few autoimmune diseases and I also have a compromised immune system. So it takes me a little bit longer um, to heal um, than most people do. But I was on short-term disability, let's say, for quite a while um, with my back. Um, do I regret having the surgery? Sometimes I say yes, but most of the time I say no. The reason why I say yes sometimes is because I knew that I wouldn't be 100%. I knew I wasn't going to be fixed. It's just, I guess I was expecting a little bit more, but my body had something else in mind. So, you know, but um, then 10 months, no, yeah, 10 months later, I'd have a spinal cord stimulator implant. So I think the both of them teamed up together have been great. Um, a lot of walking, even to this day, the Bex exercise that you can do, and this is told from my physical therapist, as well as my, my surgeons and my doctors, walk, 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 walk. You need to strengthen that core as best as you can. So I try to walk at a minimum of a mile every day um, just to, you know, get my back straightened. I try to work on stand, sitting up straight because you know, when I feel myself pull over, I'm like, stand up straight up. And it's, it's difficult at times, but heat is my friend. I always have a heating blanket around me and around my back when I'm at work. I keep my heated seats on in my truck all year round. It could be 100 outside, and I live in North Carolina, and 100 feels like 150. My heated seats are on. The heat from it helps relax my muscles a little bit and reduces some of um, the contractions that I get. I do take muscle relaxers four times a day. Um, that will probably be something that I'll, I'll take the rest of my life. And that's a combination of my back issues um, and my fibromyalgia and my myofascial pain syndrome. So it's like, I take something that will help some other things, um, but heat. I also have a mattress cover that's heated, so it will heat my entire body. So when I'm having a, a flare, like I was going through yesterday, um, it helps try to alleviate some of that pain, but it relaxes a little bit. Um, my exercises are completely different. I try to work out as much as possible. Um, Actually, I have the app class in another two hours, but I, I try to stay active because I know that's important and I need to just stay in shape, period. Anyway, you should always be active, but there's a plethora of information that you can find online for different types of exercises for people who've had back surgeries and it specializes just in that. Like I take an app class twice a week and mine is not the same as someone who's never had any back surgeries because I had a freaking fusion. My freaking back doesn't bend the way that people do because it doesn't bend <laughs> anymore. So look online and um, see what exercises are available. Pinterest has a lot of good things too. I have a lot of things that I have pinned on Pinterest um, for exercise for fusions. Um, and um, just do your research. Very, very important to research. I belong to several groups on Facebook. I've realized that the best thing you can do as an individual with any type of medical condition is surround yourself with people with the same conditions. And the reason why I say this is because these people can relate. They can tell you past experiences with different medications, give you some type of insight. They can give you a perspective that a total stranger can. A doctor can say, you'll feel like this and this is going to happen because that's what the textbook tells you. But if you're with a group of people who have been through the same thing that you've been through, they can relate. Those are the ones that you want to talk to. Medications affect people in different ways, but they can tell you your, their experience with a medication or maybe a, a similar medication that your doctor might prescribe there or less money or kill two birds with one stone. For instance, I take Humira injections. I take it because I have arthritis um, and enclosing spondylosis in my back, but I also have uveitis in my eye. And that's a medication that works with them both. So I was able to 
let other people know that have the same condition. And it's like, oh, well, I'm spending this amount of money, you know, each month for my eye and I'm spending this money for my back, but I can get this prescription and what, two injections a month and I'm saving a lot less money. So you can educate each other. There's other groups outside of being online. I prefer the online groups because my schedule can be pretty chaotic and um, I don't get the opportunity to meet that many people um, in my area that have some of the issues. And to be honest, when it comes down to my medical issues, because I have a shitload of um, medical diagnoses, there's over 15 of them are actual dis disability, um, that I'm the youngest and I'm not young. I'm 40 years old. I'm, I'm not young anymore. I mean, I'm not old, but I'm not a spring chicken where um, when I get to the doctors, I'm typically one of the younger patients, which in a good way now that I'm older, it's like, oh, okay, I'm not the youngest one anymore. But I was that 20 something year old person in the rheumatologist, you know, um, getting seen and or I would be in the waiting room and they're like, oh, are you waiting for your mother? Or are you waiting for your grandparent? And I'm like, I'm here for me. You know, it's like when they look at my medical record that's about that freaking thick, you know, it's, um, it sucks. I'm not even gonna lie, it freaking sucks. <laughs> but I try to look at the bright side because that's what you have to do. If I were to listen to my doctors completely, I would be collecting disability and not working. But I have, two amazing children and they've seen their mommy down I don't want them to see their mommy out completely I still have a lot of fighting me and I have my bad days and I have my really bad days and I have okay days and when I have those okay days you better watch out because <laughs> I kind of overdo it and I try to tell people not to do that either like um the other day I wasn't feeling too bad and I'm like Oh, it's warm outside. It's freaking January, North Carolina, and it was 70 degrees. And I had some leaves in my yard. So I decided I'm not going to clean my whole yard because I know that would be, it, it would hurt me because I wasn't feeling, you know, super good. I just felt okay. And so I did the leaves for about a half hour or so. And I think about 10 minutes in, I'm like, what the fuck did I just do? So, but I kept going and I kept getting it, getting it done. Because sometimes you need to push yourself, but you have to know your limitations. And I'm a horrible person to say that because I don't know my limitations half the time. But um, don't overdo it, especially when it comes to your back, because you can have setbacks. Um, like I mentioned, I had a huge setback in July. Um, I don't know what my recovery is going to be. My doctors um, tell me that it could be a couple of weeks, could be a couple of months, could it be a couple of years. I could be like this forever. And for me, that's not an option that um, I want this to be forever. But overall, researcher, doctor, I had um, a phenomenal team. Uh, I get to a Carolina Pain Management now. And um, I've been very blessed with amazing doctors. Um, I've worked with a Carolina Back Institute. They started me off when it came to my injections and um, so forth. Uh, I've had Dr. Margraf. I've had, let's see, I, I've got a list. I need to just pull them out one day and just do slides on, okay, this is what doctor I recommend for this. And this is the pros and this is the cons. But fortunately, every doctor that I've had operate on me, I can't think of not one con because if I can think of a con with you, you don't need to be touching this body because this is the only body I got. And I'm sorry, but I'm not going to allow you to fuck it up. But with all surgeries, there is a risk. But I think after a certain point, at least for me, that fear of, oh my gosh, what if I'm not going to come out? Or, oh my God, what if anesthesia is going to go bad? Or what if you messed up? I don't even think like that anymore. I had four eye surgeries in November. So the past eight years, nine years, eight or nine years of my life, I've had 17 surgery. Your girl has no fear. It's okay. <laughs> you have to trust in your doctor look at the pros and cons, do your research and be realistic. Yes, something can happen, but try not to focus on that. Take good care of your body and listen to your body more so, not necessarily your doctors. Lots of doctors want to just push drugs on you. Do your research because there are um, alternatives. 
Um, and I think that's about it. Overall, I'm happy. Um, it limited some of my pain. My mobility is limited as well, but I'm not as bad as I used to be. So I'm very, very thankful to my amazing surgeons for that. My family for being supportive um, throughout of my medical issues. My friends that were there. My friend Becky is completely amazing. And she's single too. I should put a picture of her down here. But I don't know if she'll like that or not. But um, more than anything, because if it wasn't for God, they wouldn't, I wouldn't have these amazing people, team of friends, family, and doctors. So I'm very, very thankful. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, or I would love to hear some of your experience from having the fusion as well, make sure you pop that down below. I read everything because I'm just starting off and I'm really not posting that much. So I'm not getting that many comments. So I actually reply <laughs> to them. But I'm gonna um, hear what's going on. And maybe, you know, like I said, when you, you're dealing with people who have experienced what you can, Chime in. If someone posts something and you have any questions, I'm sure that they're willing to type a couple sentences back and um, let you know their experience as well. And as always, take care of yourselves. Take care of another person. Love them all because, you know, we're not guaranteed tomorrow at all. We're grateful that we got today. So let's spread nothing but joy and, and good vibes and all that good stuff and just take care of one another. Until next video, I will see you later. Have a great morning, afternoon, night, wherever you're at. Just have a good one. See you next video.